In this video, we're going to be looking at the domain of a composite function. Now, I'm going to start off with these two functions. f of x is equal to 1 over x, g of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2. Now, we can identify the domain or the largest possible domain for both of these functions. So let's do that first. So for f of x, we have a domain where the only problem value of x will be 0. So x can belong to any real value apart from 0. OK? Now for g of x, its domain can be any real value of x apart from minus 2 because minus 2 would make the denominator 0. So we have the domain now for both of these functions. Now let's have a look at f of g of x. So f g of x. So g is going into f. So we have 1 over x plus 2 being substituted into 1 over x. So we get 1 over 1 over x plus 2. Now, 1 over 1 over x plus 2 is 1 being divided by 1 over x plus 2. And 1 divided by x, 1 over x plus 2 is the same as 1 times x plus 2 over 1. And so we just get left with x plus 2. So f g of x is just x plus 2. Now the domain of this function, x plus 2, ordinarily would be, well, x could be anything. x could be any real value. However, although x can be any real value, the domain for this one, there is a problem. Because we're working with f g of x, g of x brought its own baggage, effectively. g of x already had the problem that x couldn't be minus 2. So when g of x got put into f, it carried that restriction with it. And so now, although f g of x looks perfectly fine, as if there are no problems with the domain, it still has this x, it cannot be minus 2. This is because I couldn't substitute minus 2 into this because minus 2 didn't work for g of x. So in order to substitute minus 2, I'm effectively substituting minus 2 into g, which can't happen, and then that's getting substituted into f. OK? So it carries the domain of its original first function and whatever the domain is of the final function. OK? Um, kind of like mapped over one, one another. Let's, let's see it from the other point of view. Let's see it from um, g f of x. So g f of x... This time we've got f going into g. OK? So, in that case, we're going to have 1 over 1 over x plus 2. Now, I don't want to leave it like that. Uh, I've got a fraction within a fraction, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x. So we're going to have x over 1 plus 2x. OK? Now... In this form, OK, I can look at the domain of this function. Now, the only values of x that are going to cause a problem are when that denominator is 0. And that's going to happen when x is minus 1 half. That's when I'm going to have 0 in the denominator. So x can be any real value apart from minus 1 half. OK? However, f of x brought its own baggage, OK? f of x was restricted because x could not be 0. So although 
I could go, well, what's g f of 0? Well, it's 0 over 1 plus 0, so that should just be 0. That seems fine. Although it seems to work fine there, because f of x, for f of x, x couldn't be 0, x can't be 0 here either. Okay, So I must have an added piece of the puzzle where x can't be either 0 or minus 1 half. 0 from the f of x, so whatever the domain was for f of x, and now whatever the domain is for g f of x. Okay, So in this case, the domain was whatever it was for g of x and whatever it is for f g of x. So it is the two domains effectively overlapping, Okay, and all of the restrictions must be in place.